Okay. So in front of us, we have a GTX 1070 FTW. So like all the broken and faulty cards that we get, we want to first start by checking for a short on the base voltage rails and then check the resistance measurements of the other voltage rails. So if I have my multimeter in a continuity mode. If I probe some connected, something connected to ground, like ground itself, it beeps. So first let's start with the PCI Express slot. So at the PCI Express slot, we can find both 12 volts and 3.3 volts. The first two pins are 12 volts, by the way, and we're good. And if we want to check 3.3 volts, we start at this notch and we go four pins left. And we're good. Now we want to check 12 volts at both A pins. So checking this left inductor, we can check the left A pin, and we're good. And then checking this right inductor allows us to check the right A pin. And again, we're good. So we have no shorts in the base voltage rails. Now let's go ahead and move over to resistance mode and check the resist resistances of our, all of our other voltage rails. So for this card, um, okay, first let's check with uh, let's check five volts. Well, the first five volt rail I should say, so I can tell it's nine kilo ohms in rising. And let's check the second five volt rail. If you're wondering why there are two five volt rails, uh, these cards that have lots of uh, MOSFETs and power stages, they tend to have multiple 5 volt rails. But in either case, we have more than 9 kilo ohms on both 5 volt rails, so we're, sh so we're good. Now let's check 1.8 volts, we should see about 900 ohms. In my experience, if you have less than 900 ohms, or significantly less I should say, you probably have a faulty GPU. So in this case, we're good since we had an 894. Now let's check the PEX rail. So the PEX rail also connects directly to GPU. Usually I see uh, 60 plus, but in this case, I'm gonna say 51 is fine. And finally, let's check the memory. So for the memory, again, I expect to, expect to see about 60 plus, but in this case, we have um, 31 ohms. Okay, so our 31 ohms is much lower than expected. You this card, um, and then the reason why it's so low is because this card is Samsung memory. Samsung memory typically has a very low resistance relative to ground, and in this case, so in this case, 31 ohms is perfectly fine. So since we have no shorts and all our voltage rails look good, let's go ahead and boot the card and see if we're missing any voltage rails. Okay, so now the card is on, let's first check this, this 5 volt rail, and we have 5 volts. Now let's check the other 5 volt rail. 5 volts, checking 1.8 volts, which we have. Now the next voltage rail to turn on is the GPU V-Core, which we don't have. So we miss, because we're missing the V-Core, we'll, we'll, we will be missing the PEX rail, and because we're missing the V-Core, we will also be missing the memory. Okay, so for a card that is missing V-Core, you, you want to start by checking two things. So this card has the GPU VRM face controller, Instead of, okay, unlike many other GTX 10 series cards, the face controller for this card is not a UP9511P. Instead, it is an NCP81274. So, just like the UP9511P, we want to start by checking VCC and enable. Okay, so I apologize for the abrupt cut. Unfortunately, I made a mistake in an earlier recording. So, VCC for our NCP81274 can be found on this resistor here on this end, on the left, and enable can be found on the bottom right pin of this dual NPN transistor. So let's hook up the card and see if we have VCC and enable. I just want to note for this next clip, we do have 5 volt VCC, but we don't have enable. Unfortunately, I deleted the clip showing this. Okay, so as you saw, we're missing enable on our, our GPU VRM phase controller. So let me explain to you um, how enable works on these GPU VRMs. You should note that this gets rather complicated and convoluted at times. If you haven't seen my Titan X, Pas X Pascal video, this is uh, gonna be probably the first time you've seen it. So, anyways. So, the way it works is that enable is found on the bottom right pin here. When five volts turns on, it sends a signal to the top middle pin for this dual NPN transistor, and it shorts the bottom right pin, which is our enable, to ground. So, the way it works is that, uh, is that when 1.8 volts turns on, which it and by the way, it turns on after five volts, if you don't know, it then sends a signal through a series of components, or from or uses a series of commands to generate the signal to short the signal shorting 5 volts. So it sends a signal to the bottom middle pin, which itself then causes the top left pin to short to ground. But the way they do this is that they bridge the top left pin to the middle top pin through a PCB tray. So it, in essence, 1.8 volts is at least partially responsible for shorting the signal shorting enable. So once it shorts the signal sh shorting enable, enable of course rises to 2.4 volts and we have a working GPU VRM. So what component is um, required to short the signal shorting enable? Well, actually, it's this logical AND gate. And in particular, the output pin is this one over here. So usually the way it works is, um, okay, so how these logical AND gates work is that they have a VCC pin and two inputs. If they have power, 
if you know voltage is high enough on all on both inputs and the VCC pin, it outputs a signal on the on the output pin. If it's missing one or more, it doesn't output anything. So we have to check this. Assuming this is good or this is not the problem, we then have to check these uh, two diodes. So the way it works is that one of the inputs is connected to these two diodes. So these are the this this pin and this pin here. So this is the anode pin. These diodes have a common anode. So they pass voltage from these middle pins to the outer these the outer two pins here and the outer two pins here. So the idea is that this card, when it works properly, something external raises the voltage on the cathode ends um, of these two diodes and by raising the voltage there it limits the amount of current that passes from the anode to the cathode so the anode is no longer put low so anyways let's go ahead and just measure we're going to measure the uh, bottom middle pin for this dual NPN transistor and then if that's if that's a problem we're going to then measure the um, inputs for our um, logical AND gates and if that's not the problem we're then going to measure the cathode ends of our two diodes Okay, so now that the card is on, let's hook it up. Now let's first check the uh, bottom middle pin that's responsible for the in dual NPN transistor, responsible for shorting signal, short enable. So on the bottom middle pin, we have zero volts. Okay, so that's not our problem. Now let's check the input of our logical AND gate. So I'm going to check the middle inputs. 1.8, perfectly fine. Now let's check the other inputs. 602 millivolts. So this is our problem. Okay, so 602 millivolts is too low. We should see something higher, like 3.2 volts. So now let's check the cathode ends of our two diodes. I'm going to start with the diode on the right. Starting with the uh, cathode closest to the phase controller, we have... Again, let's do that again. So we have 1.8 volts. Checking the other cathode for the same diode, 1.8 volts. Now let's go over to the other diode and check the cathode. So I'm going to check, the again, the cathode closest to the phase controller. 3.2, now check the other cathode, 601 millivolts, okay, so we have a problem, one of our cathodes is actually zero volts, and what's happening is that current is passing from the anode to the cathode, which is why they're both 600 millivolts, so something is supposed to raise that cathode high, likely to 3.2 volts, but of course it's not present, and so it's not happening, so let's go ahead and trace that, and let's uh, figure out what's gone wrong. Okay, so I've done a bit of tracing, and if we, okay, so that cathode, it passes this so this is this is the uh, cathode pin that's low it passes um to this zero ohm resistor and then to this uh npn transistor so this npn transistor the idea is that they have it has a 3.2 volts on this end and 610 millivolts on the other so what happens is that when 12 volts is applied to the gate which is this pin here um 3.3 volts and passes to this uh six this pin over here and then our cathode rises to 3.3 2 or 3.3 volts, and then of course the GPU VRM, VRM should turn on. So let's check the uh, gate voltage and see if it's present. Okay, so let's check the gate. So actually, let's check the um, source of our transistor first. 600 millivolts, okay. Let's check the drain. 3.2 volts, okay. So that's what we need to pass across. Now let's check the gate. Zero volts. Okay, so we're missing our gate voltage. We need uh, we need about 12 volts. So this gate gets its 12 volts, firstly, through a 101 ohm resistor over here. So this, 101, this 101 ohm resistor right here. And on the other end, this connects to um, this component over here. Here. Now, you might think this is a transistor, but actually it's, well, NPN transistor, but actually it's a P channel MOSFET. So the idea is that if there's a voltage difference from the, uh, uh, between uh, this pin here and this pin, it then allows current to pass from, I think it's this one here, down to the bottom pin, which is the, which is connected to the gate of our NPN transistor. So let's, let's uh, go ahead and measure the pins and see if there's anything wrong with the component itself. Okay, so let's first let's measure uh, the top left pin here, 12.26, and the top right pin, 12.24. Okay, so this is not the source of our problem. We, uh, if we need a voltage, so generally speaking on a working card, this uh, top right pin, it's um, 10.5 volts, roughly speaking. So the idea is that some other component pulls this top right pin low, partially, to about 10.5 volts, so that it creates a voltage difference across the two pins and allows 12 volts to pass from the top left here 
to the bottom pin, or maybe it's the 10.5 volt one to the bottom pin, but in either case, it's supposed to be, it's not supposed to be zero volts. So, you know, there's supposed to be a voltage difference, so we have to then trace why um, we, we don't have a 10.5, sorry, 10.5 volts on this pin instead of, say, 12 volts. So I've actually already done it, that's why you saw that abrupt cut. So that 10.5 volts, it connects to a veer on the back, and particularly it connects to this veer here this here, which then connects to a resistor here, which then connects to this diode, to the, where this cathode end over here, it has a common anode, by the way, it's a, it's the same, um, or maybe it's not, yeah, yes, it's the cathode, yep, this is the cathode, so the idea is that, okay, this cathode is actually ground, believe it or not, so the idea, again, is that this, uh, diode shorts that 12 volt gate, after resistor so that it drops down to say 10 and a half volts and creates our voltage difference however for some reason it's not being shorted so let's go ahead and look at it under a uh, magnifying glass to see if we can spot what's wrong okay so as you can see we're kind of zooming in onto the back of the board so I want you to pay attention to a very particular um, veer so you, you might be able to notice that there's a veer over here yep so I want you to, okay, so the one thing that you might notice, let me get a, like a, a close up if possible, is that the veer is quite a bit brighter on the left side than it is on the right side. Now if we just turn the board over, we can kind of see that that veer has a trace, in particular it traces to a nearby resistor, as we can very clearly see. I'm not sure how it obviously be on camera, but I can see it rather clearly. Okay, now since it, despite tracing to a, uh, resistor. Let's just see if it actually connects to it via continuity. So I have my multimeter in beep mode or continuity I should say. So putting one um, well, one probe on the veer and the other on the resistor we can see that we have nothing. So at this point we also have our diagnosis. We don't, there are, well, there are no faulty components on the board because the board itself is our problem. So our board is damaged and by extension one of our traces or veers has kind of seven and a half, which is preventing um, the gate voltage we need on our P-channel -chan MOSFET from dropping to ten and a half volts. So as you can imagine, the fix for this is very simply to reconnect this veer over here that's missing the right side of its, uh, well, the right side of its copper and tracing to this resistor over here on this end. Once we do that, there should be about 10 and a half volts on the gate voltage for um, the P-channel MOSFET, and then it will pass 12 volts, and hopefully 12 volts will then you know apply to this gate, allow 3.3 .3 volts to then go to the cathode end of our um, diode. So let me go ahead and solder a wire, or at least try to solder the PCB trace back together, and we'll boot the card. Okay. So I've gone ahead and I've wired the veer to the nearby resistor that it's supposed to connect to. Hold on. If I can get it to focus. So anyways, like I said, I wired the veer to the uh, nearby resistor. I, um, I wanted to use a solder bridge, but I'm guessing the veer is broken in multiple places, maybe, since the uh, solder bridge didn't work out despite redoing it a couple times. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, plug it up and see if the thing boots. Okay. With the system on, let's check the uh, voltage here on our P-channel MOSFET. So this is this pin here is actually the gate voltage. Anyways, now let's boot the card. 10, well, 10.7 instead of 10.5, which is fine. Do a V-core? We do, and better yet, we have an image. There we go. Okay, so we have a BIOS splash screen. Our card is now in a bootable state, so I guess all we have left to do is to put the cooler back on and stress test it. Actually, you know, before we do that, um, let's just let's just go over the diagnosis one more time, you know, in case it's a bit convoluted. I know these enable signals can get pretty complicated pretty quickly. So, our problem is that okay, so we had a uh, cathode that was being pulled low. Well, that no, our anode. Sorry, the signal responsible for shorting. So the signal responsible for shorting the signal that shorts enable, the bottom middle pin, was missing. It was missing because the logical AND gate wasn't outputting anything, and the logical AND gate wasn't outputting anything because it was missing the uh, bottom right inputs. So that was missing because it, th that's connected to the anode, and one of the cathodes, sorry, one of our diode's cathodes was being, well, wasn't being pulled high, and it wasn't being pulled high because this transistor didn't have 12 volts at its gates, and it didn't have 12 volts at, 12 volts at its gates, 
because there wasn't a voltage difference between the um, this pin here and the gate of our p-channel MOSFET and there wasn't a voltage difference because again we had a uh, severed via and trace so our via was no longer connecting to this resistor over here which means that cur that, that 12 volt gate wasn't passing through this resistor to the anode of our diode over here and by extension being thrown to ground to this uh, which is this cathode here anyways like i said let's go ahead and uh put the cooler back together and let's boot the card okay so as you can see the uh card's running game at the moment it's been running game for about an hour now so if we go over gpz we have pcie x16 2.0 which is the maxis computer support supports and if we go over to uh the sensors tab you know the clocks look good the temperature's fine rpm's fine um, TDP is a bit low, sorry, power consumption I mean, but that's because it's limited by the software. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and say that the card is repaired. So uh, I was a bit surprised by this, you know, by this particular card. You know, it's, uh, it's not uncommon for electronics to have, let's say, trace damage due to corrosion, but it is rather uncommon for it to be on a graphics card. So, you know, this one, like I said, you know, kind of surprised me. I was expecting to see a dead component, but instead, you know, we just had a board damage. Anyways... If you don't know, um, in case I didn't mention it, the P-Channel MOSFET is an, it, it's a um, IRL ML6402, I think. The dual NPN transistor is 2N7002W, um, DW-7F. Anyways, and the anode and the um, logical AND gate, they'll all be linked in the description. Anyways, I hope you learned something watching this video, and um, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.